Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. This is, of course, the Ramble. This is Goes Till Midnight, and I'm Alex Bennett. Alex Bennett is still alive? Ladies and gentlemen, here's Larry Bubbles Brown. Yes, Alex, how are you? I'm fine. How are you, Mr. Brown? Good. I was uh, reading the San Jose Mercury the other day, which I like because they've got a great obituary. Oh, really? Page, yeah, which so you don't see much anymore. And, and I, one of the things I like to do is I, I, I always like to find out people that died that were younger than me. Well, that's and, which, that's the reason. Which is a lot now. <laughs> well, that's the reason why I always looked at the uh, what do you call it at the. Um, uh, at the uh, uh, obituaries. Excuse yeah. me, I'm a little out of it today because 8,000 things are going on here. But anyway, uh, no, I, I always read the obituaries to make sure people died who were younger than I was. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, or older than I was, younger, younger than I was, yeah. Uh, but the fact is that now at my age, it, it, I'm, I'm watching the obituaries to feel glad that I didn't die, okay? <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, you know, who was it? I think it was. I think it was Carl Reiner, who said that every morning he would get up and read the obituaries, and if his name wasn't there, he went on with his day. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> way know? to do it. You know, but um, so you so you look at it to see people what who are younger than you? Yeah, yeah. In the, you know, I mean, ten years ago, it would be now. It's not a. Now it's kind of a, you see a lot of them, but uh, yeah, yeah. Then I went home and I found my old uh, almanac, and I found I started looking at actors that uh, these people that accomplished a lot that were much younger than you or I. So, like uh, and they, Peter Lorre, Peter Lorre died at sixty. Really? Yeah. He always looked like he was in his eighties, didn't he? He did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, when we say Peter Lorre, let me let me uh, preface that by saying Peter Lorre was an actor who was in movies. Okay, and the reason I'm actor. Say, uh, the reason I'm saying that is the people we're talking to right now probably don't remember Peter Lorre. Would you say that's uh, probably not? No. You know, I, I think uh, I could dig, go out there and if I were in an average audience, this is an older audience that I tend to get, but in a normal audience, and I mention uh, the Beatles uh, and say to somebody, name all of them, they couldn't. You know, they usually they miss George. Oddly enough. <laughs> forgotten Beatle. <laughs> but, I mean, it's just that we assume that people know when we say Peter Lorre who Peter Lorre is. And the fact is that Peter Lorre, unless people watch old movies, which nobody does anymore, right? Because there are no car crashes and no beat em up fights, you know, and so on. Uh, but if you watch Casablanca, you know who Peter Lorre is. You know, if you watch The Maltese Falcon, you know who Peter Lorre is. But if you don't watch those films, which is most people, because they're in black and white, forget it. They don't know who they are. You know. But Peter Lorre was 60. God. I, yeah. I, I would have uh, thought he was much older than that. Best known for uh, Maltese Falcon, I would guess. Yeah, lesser known for uh, uh, Casablanca because his part is smaller in Casablanca. But uh, do you know that the uh, Maltese Falcon was made three times, two times before the one you know? I did not. Yes, it was made in 1930, starring Ricardo Cortez as Sam Spade. Uh, and it was pretty much the same story. Okay, not a bad movie, I might add. Really? Yeah. 
But then they remade it in 1936 with Betty Davis called Satan Met a Lady. And it's the same plot except instead of a Sidney Greenstreet uh, male character, uh, it was a female. And they were going after, I think it wasn't the Maltese Falcon, it was called something else. But it is based on the Sheila Hammett's uh, 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 novel, uh, The Maltese Falcon. So it was made then. And then they made it in like 1940 or 41 with, uh, with Bogart and John Huston directing it. And that's the one that became famous. But they made it within 10 years. They made it three times. Jesus, <laughs> until I got it right. <laughs> well, that that was not unusual in the early days of films because movie companies owned rights to properties, right? And uh, they had to make... You know how many movies they made a year, a studio? They had to make to fill the theaters. 52 films a year. Wow. They, yeah. And I don't know if that included the short films, you know, the, the, the companion features you know, that were really short. Like, you know, if you watch uh, uh, Turner Classic Movies, you'd be surprised at the number of films there are that are under 75 minutes. You know, there are some films that are like 59 minutes. Um, really? Well, it's, yeah. uh, Woody Allen's run pretty short and, and Hitchcock. Yeah, but they ran short, but they, they ran about an hour and a half. Hour and 40 minutes. Um, that 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 the, you're right there, but it, it, they weren't that short. They weren't under an hour, for instance. So TCM every now and then will spend a day running films that were, you know, under an hour and ten minutes or something like that, and they run like a ton of films, you know, almost twenty four films in a day. But they had those films, and some of them were made, some of them weren't companion features. Some of them were actual features. But anyway, anything else you found in your almanac? Yes. Uh, let's see. John Candy died at forty-three. Wow. Yeah. Well, that I believe because I remember he was a fairly young man. You know, but it, grossly overweight, and uh, literally asking for it. Well, his father and brother also died of a heart attack at the same age. So at the same exact pretty, age, and were they heavy? They all died at 40. Yes, that's a very strong genetic uh, feeling there. Yeah, but were they heavy? That's the question. Uh, that I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, wow, 43. Okay, what else you got there? Steve McQueen died at 50. Yes, he died of... Uh, what was it? He had, it was, some, he had some gigantic tumor around his stomach. I remember he was, went down to Mexico. He went down, and to, was down to Mexico. Trying to yeah. experimental treatments and everything. Yeah, it, it, that, that, that probably killed him more than uh, the actual that disease. probably did so. him in, but uh, he, was, uh, he was a huge actor in the 70s. You would imagine if you have that kind of money, okay, which I'm sure Steve McQueen was not poor, uh, if you have that much money, that you should be able to get the best doctors available and somehow f get answers to tumors and things like that. But he went to Mexico. Uh, who else went? Didn't didn't Andy Kaufman do the same thing? Didn't he go to some and, quest? Andy Kaufman was thirty four. He died in eighty four. Yeah, he went. Uh, I guess that movie didn't he go to the Philippines? I think so, yeah. And it was, it, there was some, you know, fake faith healers there, you know, that he went and tried. But the now, he used to show up. I didn't know this. I was a new comic then. But they said right before he died, he kept showing up at the other cafe in San Francisco and would uh, he'd just look around. They asked him if he wanted to go on. He said no. Uh, uh, the story I get was from Monty Hoffman. Who was also dead? How old was Monty when he died? Do you know? Well, let's see. Monty was born in '51 and died about. He died about ten years ago. So. Yeah. Well. Probably the mid '60s. Anyway, Monty told me the story about how he was outside the other cafe, and uh, there was, you know, Andy Kaufman, and he went up to Andy and he said, "Hi, Andy. <laughs> how how are you doing?" 
And Andy said, I'm dying. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah. He said, I'm dying. And uh, um, you know, Monty was taken aback by that, and he said, uh, well, you know, is it bad? He says, yeah, it's terrible. He said, but you know what the worst part about it is? He said, what? He said, nobody believes me. <laughs> Which I can understand because, you know, Andy was always known for doing massive put-ons. Yeah, and the, there's always rumors that he's going to pop up someday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, um, he, uh, that was, a, to me, that was tragic because nobody did believe him. And uh, he uh, he went on and, you know, he died. Uh, I can't remember what he died of, but it was some, I think maybe a cancer of some sort. We've had, yeah. we, you know, comedians either live to be really old or really young. Or really young. Uh, I Bill, mean, you Bill know, I, 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 always, uh, I always bring up Bill Hicks, who um, the last time I saw Bill Hicks was in the uh, green room at the Punchline. And I sat down with him because I knew Bill, and I liked Bill, and Bill liked me, and, you know, we had a good rapport with each other. And I said to him, so uh, how you doing? And he said, well, he said, this is my last performance. I said, what do you mean? He says, I'm giving up comedy. I said, you're giving up comedy? Because that would seem ridiculous to me. This is a guy who was maybe one of the best up-and-coming comics of the time. And uh, he said, yeah, I'm just going to go back and live in Texas. And But he didn't say he was dying. But that's what it was all about. Wow. He knew he had pancreatic cancer, and there's basically very little cures for pancreatic cancer. Uh, my wife underwent pancreatic cancer operation that did make it go away, but then she got cancer elsewhere, you know. Uh, but uh, 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 he, he had pancreatic cancer, and he knew that there was nothing he could do about it. Basically, uh, with pancreatic cancer, the doctors say, go home and make peace with the world because you're going to be dead in six months. Yeah, he was 33. He was 33. And I, I really, I th that that's a loss that I mourn, you know. Number one, he was a nice guy. He was one of the good guys. And he was one of the rare genius comics, you know. Uh, not that you aren't in that group, by the way. <laughs> I, I don't want to. In, I don't want to. I don't want to insult you by not implying that you aren't <laughs> yeah. one of the geniuses. But I think look you, at Mitch. Mitch Hedberg. I think thirty-six. I didn't know of Mitch Hedberg. I'm, how no, old? Was, was, how old was he? He was about thirty-six when he died. But by the way, folks, if you're just tuning in, isn't this another wonderful session with Bubs? Uh, you know, isn't this life affirming? <laughs> Next time we can read from a black box. <laughs> uh yeah, we <laughs> oh boy! Yeah, you you used to bring that in to the show. Yeah, it's, it was a Remember, book. we get the other comics to play the co-pilot, and we'd read them. <laughs> yeah, but they we'd all. They, I remember that there was uh, there was this book called the Black Box, and it was black box conversations just before a plane crashed. Uh -huh. Okay, and uh, every one of them, they were transcripts. Ended with sound of impact. Sound of impact. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But, uh, do you do you remember any of them? Do you remember one that stands out? I remember one. These guys. It wasn't a big commercial plane, but they were flying around Texas, and they were, it, it was bad weather, and they were lost. And one guy's looking at a map, and he goes, "There's there's a mountain around here about forty five hundred feet," and he. He asks, what's our altitude? Uh, the guy goes, 45 hun, sound of impact. <laughs> I don't want to laugh. I mean, those people are dead. No, it's horrible. <laughs> they have fa families that cared about them, but, you know, come on. Gee, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, but I remember you came in with that. That was your that was your big deal. Yeah. Um, but But now you've got your almanac. I got my uh, Paul Lynn, 56. Really? Yeah. Again, 
you know, um, I, uh, I, I would think, okay, that he would have been older than that. You know? Yeah, I think these. Yeah, I think these guys have been a lot older, and I'm shocked when I see how young they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now that we have people who died when they were really old, Th- those are the ones I'd like to hear about. You know, uh, but we just lost uh, when this was recorded. We lost Pee Wee Herman, uh, Paul Rubens. Uh, he was seventy. Yeah, I remember <laughs> the best line he ever had anywhere. It was after that whole arrest down in Florida for jerking off in the porn theater. Um, uh, he uh, he went to the MTV Awards and came on and said, "Anybody heard any good jokes lately?" <laughs> <laughs> um, he was, I think, singularly brilliant. Again, you know, and I don't throw that term around too often. Um, but didn't you think, weren't you appreciative of him and what he was doing? Yeah, I remember going to see uh, the movie he did was hilarious. Pee-wee's Big Adventure. That was Tim Burton's first big film. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And it was, uh, I thought it was wonderful. The it thing was hilarious, was, yeah. Well, the thing was, and I, you know, I say to Marjorie, we should watch some uh, Pee-wee's Playhouse because you can find them in various places, right? Mm-hmm. And she says, no, I don't want to watch it. And I went, you know, you're really denying yourself a pleasure here because this was a show that was made on two levels. A, it was made for kids because it was on Saturday mornings. But the other level is it was made for adults. And that's what was so wonderful about it. And every adult I knew watched that thing on Saturday mornings. You know, so I really appreciated him for what he created. That all started as a theater uh, exercise at the Groundlings down in L.A. And he was part of the Groundlings. And then he took this character and just to, you know, put him on TV and everything else and, and became very successful with it. So I, I, really, uh, I really appreciated the guy. You know, Sad to see him go. Uh, but he, yeah, he was 70. He, 70. Old. 70. No, it's not. But to me, that's not that old. You know, to you, how old are you now? Uh, I'm just uh, just over that. So Seventy-one. Seventy-one. So you know, you you figure you're on borrowed time now. I do. Yeah. Well, borrowed time actually is I think anything over what uh, six uh, seventy-seven or seventy-six. What is it now for males? Males go uh, earlier. Seventy-seven than, or seventy-eight. Yeah, 77 or 78. And what is it for women? Do you know? Uh, 80. 80. And the reason is, the reason guys die younger is because the women nag them to it. (laughs) Exactly. Now, that's a sexist joke, and I will stand by it, okay? Um, But, uh, you know, so, I mean, uh, it's sad that these people go so early. Because they, you know, they at least should be able to, earn, you know, live the fruits of their, of their labors. In other words, they get to be older, got a lot of money, go have a good time. You know, they never had time for that. No. You know, they never had time to retire. I think that's probably the term we should use here. But uh, right, well, let's go back to the almanac. Who else do we have? Okay, we've got... Uh, and let, this time, say the name, but let me guess the year. Okay, okay let me see. Uh, hmm. Yeah? Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee, I think, if I'm not mistaken, was somewhere in the area of 35? Uh, 33. Okay, so I'm, I was close enough. You're very close. Yeah, yeah. Um... A lot of people think he was murdered. Um, yeah, that was a weird one of those weird. There's so many people get murdered on movie sets, right? Well, <laughs> he wasn't. He didn't die on a movie set. He just died. Uh, he and he, it was of a of a. Some, Maybe his son died in a movie. Set. Does it say what he died of there? It does. It just got the year. He died in seventy three. Does it say what he died of? No. Hold on a second. 
Echo, what did Bruce Lee die of? Bruce Lee died on July 20th, 1973, from mm. swelling of the brain caused by a reaction to prescription medication. Oh, it says a, a, a brain swelling caused by prescription medications. Oh. Does that sound suspicious? That sounds very suspicious. <laughs> yeah. They say it might have been the triads. You know. Um, but it, 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 who knows? But, uh, again... Uh, a guy who was having a fairly interesting career. I mean, he pretty much created the whole um, martial arts end of, of movies, you know. And everybody since then has tried to imitate him. So it's, uh, it, you know, it's amazing uh, what he did. Who else you got in there? Who else you got in the book? Let me guess the age. Uh, okay, very. Uh, Peter Lawford. Peter Lawford, I'm going to guess maybe maybe 63? 61. You're very good. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's young, though, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, there it, it was no reason for him to go. But, you know, a lot of these guys in that time, uh, they smoked, they drank, you know, they did all those Big things. Big boozers and uh, uh, smokers, yeah. Well, you know, sure. I, I watch movies today that are, you know, from, you know, the, the 50s. And everybody's got a cigarette in their mouth. And I'm going, no wonder these guys died young. Yeah, Humphrey Bogart, 57. Humphrey Bogart. Always, always, always smoking in the movies. Always smoking in the movies. And... Uh, and I don't think he was always smoking in the movies because it was part of the character. You know, sometimes she smoked because it's the character. Uh, but, I mean, it just... I mean, I can't imagine how many people were killing themselves. I can't imagine that I was killing myself with smoking. You know? Luckily, yeah, I... I never saw you smoke. Uh... Uh, luckily, I stopped in time. I stopped when I went to the quake. And some guy came in one morning... And said uh, he was his his bit bit was you should stop smoking, and they said well let's give you a test to see if you have any of your breathing hampered at all by smoking, and so I took the test and yes my breathing was hampered by smoking, and I went home that day and I said today's the day I quit, and I went out and I bought I remember there was a thing called Bantron there were these pills you could take that were nicotine replacement for your system. And I took those for a couple of days, and I said, "I'm, I, I, I." And I always say to people to do this if they want to quit smoking. Don't say you're going to quit smoking. Or don't say you're going to quit something. You're just going to see how long you can go without doing it. Okay, because if you say you're quitting, you set a, a bar that you have to hurdle. Whereas you say, "I'm just stopping, and I'm going to see how long I can stop." You're giving yourself a little, you know, goal as it were and I did that and I I quit I completely stopped stopped when I was at the quake were you you were on with me at the quake were you yeah yeah and you didn't ever see me smoke there no oh, okay because I always had a cigarette in my hand but yeah. I was that was just at the end of the quake when I first came on tell you years later I went to a urologist and he said well you might have uh, he says did you smoke cigarettes and I said, yes, I smoked for 20 years, but I quit. Quit about 25 years ago. And he said, well, we still got to check you for, for, for uh, uh, what do you call it, bladder cancer. Bladder uh, cancer, I, yeah. I, well, he was trying to pad the bill. Uh, and I said, why? <laughs> I said, I quit smoking. He said, well, he said, you know, you smoked 40 pack, two packs a day, so that's 40 pack years. And I said, so I might still have cancer from that even though it's 25 years later? And he says, yeah. I said, then there was no reason for me to quit, right? <laughs> and he had no answer for that one. But, you know. I, I, uh, God, I enjoyed smoking. It was such a prop, you know. Did you ever smoke? No. No, because my parents were chain smokers, so I hated the, I just couldn't stand the smell of smoke, so yeah. I never did it myself. Did, did they die of cancer, of lung cancer or something? Or no, no. What did they, what did they go of? Uh, just like, uh, what was it, uh, uh, 
bad arteries and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Were they older? But that, that which is caused by smoking. So were they older? Yeah, oh, yeah, they're in their uh, mid to late eighties. Oh wow! And they smoked. They chain smoked. Uh, they finally quit in like in their sixties, I think. But it was, uh, <laughs> but they, it was a lot. But well, I'm thinking now, you know, at this age, I could, I could go any day now. i I ought to go back to smoking or at least trying heroin. <laughs> Anyway, we've run out of time here, Larry. Once again, another wonderful uh, get-together with the likes of Larry Bubbles Brown. We'll see you next time, Larry. See you next week. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes, Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen, the old bubs. Yeah. And there's nobody waiting to come on. Well, oh boy, what is this lately? Do you hate me? <laughs> What's the story? You know, I mean, I could go to sleep now if I wanted to. Maybe I should, maybe I should do it right here until somebody calls. Let me see here. Just catch a couple of winks here. <laughs> uh, well... I guess even begging and pleading doesn't seem to say anything. I know we're going out. That I do know. Uh, and um, uh, so anyway, um, I don't know what to say, folks. I don't know what to say. This is uh, this is it, you know? I mean, I, I uh, well, it says somebody. I don't know who that is, so I can't even answer that. So if you're somebody... Now, let me see who somebody is. Uh, let me see here. Um, well, it doesn't seem to be... Um, oh, I know who that is. That's Brian. And uh, let's see, Alan is entering here, and Jeff Stein. You're waiting for somebody calls, so somebody's calling. Yeah, but when you do that, I don't know if you're somebody who's going to, like, uh, you know, give me a real bad time or whatever, you know? Oh, what? You know, a little gay porn at the beginning of the show, if nobody's going to call, that's all well, our fault, right? I expect gay porn out of you, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, we matched today. Hmm? We matched tonight. Not really. A little orange going on. Well, is this orange? It comes across as orange on this camera, but it's really kind of closer to red. How's that? Now we're yeah. really matched. Yeah. And now what? What is with your, your your color is all. I know because I close everything off so my orange shirt looked darker so we would match. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> anyway, now you're all blue. You're green. Oh, now now you're orange. Now you're orange. Ah, there we go. Really orange. Huh? Yeah. Really orange. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Jeff. How are you this evening? Good. I had a good day. You had a good day? What made it good? Well, I uh, took a ride on my bike. Mm -hmm. I went to the swimming pool and walked around in the water a couple hours, and then uh, I came home and uh, made a paella. Made a paella? Yeah. Well, it's pretty good. Yeah, how is your paella? Is it good? I'm, I imagine if you make paella, it must be good. Well, sometimes it's fantastic. Some of them, you know. Like when I say Depends I make... Upon, yeah. It's, it's a great thing that you can add 27 different things. Well, what it is is in the old days, you know, at, at the Spanish home, they had a lot of stuff left over from the week. Mm -hmm. And so they made a rice base and they put some... Uh, sausage, sauce, but then you you had some sausage left over. You threw that in. You had some fish left over. You threw that in. Shrimp. You threw that in. All yeah. the things you had left over. I mean, yeah. that's what a stew is, isn't it? Yeah, Basically, same. you know, there were all these dishes, what we call leftover dis dishes. It became a mm. a pretty good deal, you know. So, so anyway. I I put some shrimp in and clams that we had left over. And a uh, little chicken that was left over, a piece of that. And, and, of course, the rice and, you know, and all the vegetables and things like that. Yeah, good good for you. Good for you. 
it's fun. Yeah. I mean, women like to think they're the best cooks because they do all this cooking at home, but actually men are better cooks, <clears throat> I think, by and large. When you, well, when, oh. you, when you look at all the really big chefs in the country, yes. who are yeah. they? They're males. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason is that women grow up having to cook so they don't want to, you know, and men don't have to, so they want to. And um, also, I think men are more experimental than women are. In other words, I will take a, a, a recipe and I will do it once as the recipe says. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I, I add stuff and take stuff away and put in more of something and a little bit of something else, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it really um, kind of uh, becomes a really good, uh, uh, you give, men become far more experimental with cooking. Yeah. Women were always the kind of looked in the cookbook and oh, I've got to put in a, a tablespoon of this and a, mm -hmm. you know, a, a cup of that. You know, guys will go a cup of that. Uh, if I add another half a cup of wine, it just might be a little bit better. You know, <laughs> every time. So the recipe is just like a starting thing for you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, I, also, if you see a chef, those guys are working quickly and effectively. And, and not just what they're going to cook, but to get it all done. Well, the skill they have, the, the skill yeah. they have that always amazes me is cutting up a carrot, for instance. With a da, 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 da. I, I'd lose five fingers by then, <laughs> you know. But yeah. but they never do. They they are just they got it all in right. the you know, right place, the right time, and everything like that. You know. The trick is to put your knuckle forward, and the knife rides up and down. I don't yeah, even I, want I'm you. I don't want I'm you to far even. From an expert. I don't want you to even tell people how to do it because then they'll try it and cut their finger off, and then I get sued. I, I'm just saying I'm not an expert because I I end up usually cutting my finger. So. Yeah. But that's how they do it. They get a knuckle in the way. I, I don't know. I don't cook. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, today was a, thanks for asking. Today was a, uh, a quiet day. Good for you. But I didn't ask you yeah. yet. No, you didn't. It's okay. That's, I'll just and I know you're going to ask me next. So yeah, I had a long day. I had to work in Lodi today. So mm -hmm. I know you're going to ask me too. So how far are you from Lodi where you live? 97 miles, but an hour and a half drive. Oh, jeez almighty. Why did you move and that far away from if work? I'm, yeah, if I'm working late, then it's about almost two hours. Why did you mm. move that far away from work? I didn't move that far away. We moved the building that far away. Oh, you were closer to it at one point. Yeah, so Sunnyvale was like 30 minutes away commute. And then, but we had this, we have a plastic mold injection company in Lodi. So we had the two plants and we have one in Sweden, but we had that. So Google bought all the land in Sunnyvale and so we uh we had a plan so we built uh we built a big building right next to our plastic mold injection company so we can get stuff from resin to the customer all in one mm -hmm. you know one block so you have something in newark over by me don't you yeah we just closed one of those buildings it was really really only for covid bring up i built those two and then uh we have building two still up because we just bought another company called biochip and we're doing some top secret stuff over there now you don't really sell anything to the public do you you're not a company that no, sells to the no it's medical public. facilities yeah mm -hmm. yeah so the big ones are the 120 plus bed so i can't facilities. go out and buy one of your products and support you right no okay. not really just wanted to make sure of that you know no are you involved in uh, developing the new products no no, that's R and D. We're gonna keep R and D in Redwood City. I'm oh, sorry, uh, uh, Sunnyvale, just because yeah. it's a big, you know, it's a niche uh, career, so it's hard to find that in Lodi. So we're gonna keep a couple buildings here, but we're moving, yeah, yeah moving around. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, it, and you make te basically testing things for. Yeah, we test for infectious disease. Now, do you sell to somebody like Quest, for instance? Do they use any of your products or? Do they no, just have their own? No. Like for when we first started, a lot of stuff was for VA hospitals, and then then we just go from all the other medical facilities from there. Yeah, all hospitals and government stuff too. Now your company, I can't uh, buy stock in your company, or can I? No. No. 
I don't think it can. Not publicly traded. Not publicly traded. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Danaher is. Yeah, Danaher. Now our big company is Danaher. So that is. Dan now, what does Danaher do? Danaher is a big company that that is our parent company. So they have bought a whole bunch of these companies. They have like 200 other companies that they bought. Wow. A lot of dental stuff. So when you go to the dentist, a lot of the stuff that they use is, is uh, they're a company, but they're also with um, Danaher. And um, what's that stupid uh, expensive camera that uh, Bill likes? The, the st Nikons? No, no, it starts with an L. That, uh, Leica? Yeah, Leica. We, we, own, we own the microscope division of that company but not the camera i remember when i was a kid i used to use microscopes because i loved science mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and uh i uh, i used like uh, microscopes yeah i've been to that facility in germany it's pretty amazing how they how they polish all the glass and stuff it's, it's mm -hmm. pretty cool yeah well i i spent years in college when i was a kid studying microbiology and guess how you study microbiology with a microscope yeah. Of course, the most I ever did with a microscope was I take one of my hairs and put it under there to take a look at my hair. Yeah. <laughs> and what did it tell you? <laughs> Failed. You'll be gone soon. <laughs> there's a Homer Simpson. There's a there's a you know they how they go back in the history. So there's one of Homer and he's young with a full head of hair and he, he's at the sink getting ready in the morning and he sees a couple hairs in the sink. He goes, Ah, don't worry, I got plenty of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy you know what i got today I, I i sent away to amazon i saw the, i saw this advertised on tv i can't remember where one of the news channels i guess and it it said uh, it's called the, um, the the hair weasel i think that's what it's called and uh it's uh, it's a thing you put down your drain and then you know, um, I, usually I have my my super come up and snake the drain. Well, these are little. This is a plastic s snake about that long, yeah, and you hook it bar. on. You hook hook it onto the grinding thing, and you put it in there. Man, I took out a just a ton of stuff out of my uh, out of my sink. And my yeah. Marjorie says, "Well, it can't be f stuck. You know, uh, uh, held up there. You know, it, it can't be." Let me start over again. I think ahead of myself these days. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm out of sink tonight. What is this? I don't you know. No, you were cleaning the sink. How could you be out of sink? Anyway, what was I saying? So anyway, what was I going to say? Oh, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so the, the plastic thing has little barbs on it, yeah, right? So yeah. when you stick it in there, then you, you pull it up and down, and then all the hair is attached no, to it. No, but you don't have form. to pull it up and down. It's like a real snake, and it you, you, you hook it onto this thing that mm -hmm. uh, turns it around and around and around down there. So it doesn't just, you're not just going down and trying to snag onto something. It's like wiggling around and getting it. And it's called the hair, I think it's called the hair weasel, mm. if I'm not mistaken. Excuse me, folks, if I'm a little out of sync. I just won't talk tonight, screw it, you know. But anyway. You look fine here. I, do, I, I know I look fine there. I look fine on my, uh, uh, what do you call it, on my uh, Zoom. But uh, I'm not, uh, you know, completely that good um, on my uh, on my show going out here. So I don't know. I, I give up. Anyway. It looks okay on YouTube. Yeah, it does? Okay. Well, yeah, but you can't hear my voice to see if I'm in sync, you see. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. I know it looks good on YouTube. Mm. Last night I had my camera go out on me, so I went to another camera. And that camera froze up on me, so I finally went to the cheapest camera I own, and it didn't and freeze up picture. on me. Didn't freeze up on me, not a not a chance. So best picture. Yeah, yeah. It was it, does, and I was amazed because uh, it's the cheapest camera I have, and the picture was pretty damn good, mm. you know. So yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but anyway. So I, I went to my doctor yesterday, my neurologist, you know, mm -hmm. the one that sent me to that doctor, you know, who uh, did all those blood tests on me and then never got back to me and charged the Medicare $5,000. Do you remember that doctor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was waiting for this day. I was just waiting 
Uh, here, I'll put my hand over my mouth, then you won't be able to tell that I'm out of sync. Um, anyway, so I, uh, uh, I, I could hardly wait for yesterday to tell this guy, hey, you know that guy you sent me to? Well, guess what, right? So I go to him and I tell him this, and he goes, gee, I, I always heard he was a very good doctor, I, and I get along with him very well. We go to the same synagogue together. <laughs> oh. And I'm going, well, you know, I can't beat that. that that's, a, that's, a, that's a trump <laughs> card that you just can't go better than. So uh, he went and did more tests on me and everything yesterday. He, he's decided the reason why I'm lightheaded a lot is because of my neuropathy. That, yeah, that the, the, the legs are sending messages from the brain or whatever. I don't know. I don't get it. That, yeah. That's weird. I've never heard that. Man. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure there's a lot of things I've never heard of in medicine, but that sounds weird. Well, you know, uh, I'm sure there are a lot of things my neurologist never heard of in medicine, but he still evokes <laughs> them, you know, mm -hmm. so... I don't know. Am I am I am I out of it, or is our doctors just terrible today? Terrible. The I'm on my I'm on <clears> the, <throat> year year and a half ago. I saw my first podiatrist. I've now seen four of them at Kaiser. Really? Why? Yeah. Because each one was ingrown toenails. Oh. I got that. Yeah, I got ingrown toenail on my right foot a year and a half ago. Yeah. On both sides of the right toe, big toe. <gasps> And she only trims one side, says the other side will take care of itself. Wrong, still going on. So, you know, going soaking and all this other stuff and trimming. And so finally I saw another urologist on Wednesday for my left toe, which is doing the same thing. And he says, it's not gonna, I don't know why she trimmed only one side on, on your left toe. Well, let's numb it up and trim both sides. I mean, that's the way to fix it. Wait a minute, in order to fix your toenails, they have to numb you up? Yeah, well, they numb it up because they're going to cut on either side of the toenail, yeah, and and pull that piece of toenail no out. No wonder nobody listens. No, no wonder nobody listens to this show or calls this show. They don't want to hear yeah. this stuff. No, you know. So I I told you I I cut my my big toe. <laughs> I got. Okay, so I have two big toes that are really jacked up. Because get I as disgusting basketball. as you want. I can't lose any more people or get any less okay. people calling. Okay. Okay. Good. Screw everybody. Okay. Yeah. So, so I I this is going to be the best. This is going to be the best last show I ever do. Okay. Go ahead. This I know. Just think of something. I okay. So so I played a lot of basketball when I was in high school and and beyond. So anyways, my big toes you get beat up. A lot of people stepping on feet and when you're down like big man so okay so uh so i've always had two jacked up one got jacked up one actually got ripped up when i was moving a mattress that had a plastic cover it grabbed it and pulled it actually pulled the nail off it grew back perfect really? so but now i just cut it too short and it had it ingrown so i've been suffering with that for like a month now and it's almost continued on so i'm glad to hear that the doctor said just let it grow out so um, my blade did turn a little red. I thought it was going to be infected, but it's okay. Do you want to see it? Do you want to see it? Maybe this will get yeah, more. Yeah, than show us. Really? Yeah. Go, ahead. Know, Go ahead. Go ahead. I learned. I learned something new that you don't trim the nail around with the red. Yeah. You, Especially... you go straight across and yep. then file the 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 the, the points because when you yeah. go around, you trim into the into the into the side too much. Yeah, I think I trimmed into the side, and then the left over there sort of, you know, ripped that out, and then the combination of both just had to dig in. Do a video of that. I, bet Gee, that I wish Charlie tough. would call, and he could just show us his feet. Uh, you know? No, I, I... no, no, no. Did you, did you see the picture of his feet? Oh my God! You know, talking about it and making jokes. Is, is there one a thing picture of it on post, his on his he Facebook? He posted page? a picture of it, and it, 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 his toes are not there. It's, it's just that no cgi for sure it's they have an ad on tv now for some <laughs> woman who smoked they in new york they run the most incredibly disgusting ads for anti-smoking and it's a woman saying uh i uh, smoked and look at my feet and they show her no toes right no toes on tv at dinner time when i'm trying to eat food mm. Now, if, if Charlie's listening, I'm sorry. I, you know, I don't mind having to look at your feet, however. Because they're intelligent feet. All right? But anyway, so, I mean, so I've seen people without toes. 
You know, the hardest part is, I've never asked Charlie about this exactly, but I guess he's got to have some kind of put thing put in his shoe. Yeah, he in must. In order to make up for the toes, in order to balance, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I I always thought that the whole ball of your foot and your toes were really important, well, you know, for balancing. Well, and I'm having a real problem balancing uh, mm-hmm. because of the neuropathy. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't trip or anything, but you know, I got to be very careful when I'm walking that. You know, uh, today mm-hmm. I took a walk and it was okay, but a couple of times I stumbled a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marjorie says she stumbles quite a bit too, but she doesn't have the neuropathy. Mm-hmm. Uh, although she does have she she does have uh, her her feet are numb, so like mm-hmm. mine. So you know, yeah, my, I guess. So I, now yeah, I yeah. wear sandals now when I drive to Lodi because when my feet get a little numb and sore. I saw I, a, uh, a a the uh, AFI tribute today to Sean Connery. And he got up and gave his speech. And at the end of the speech, he says he had some guy he knew that he really respected and he really liked who said to him something very profound once. And oh. he said, what he said to me was, just remember, life is good. It's the last third that's shit. <laughs> 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 and I heard that and I went, you know yeah. something? Nothing is more the truth, right, Jeff? I every morning. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, I keep going. You know, what, what? Why can't I feel more comfortable? I just want to feel more comfortable. It should be that when you when you get later on in life, actually things don't get like don't hurt, you know, uh, and all of that. But as you get older, things just get worse. Everything. Yes, they do. I mean, I guess I'm. I guess maybe. How long is this equipment supposed to last? Have I outlived that? Is that what I've done? And and that now I'm I'm suddenly getting all these. I mean, I'm not terrible. I know people younger than me who have more things, you know, wrong with them and so on. I'm I'm relatively healthy, just not in my mind, you know. But when mm-hmm. I heard John Connery say that about life is good except for the last third, which is shit. And he said this on national television, by the way. So don't demonetize me, okay? <laughs> I agree with him, unfortunately. You know, and you know, I guess when when Trump screws up and when the when the uh, the ozone's being screwed up and stuff, I'm I'm sort of happy that I'm in the last third of my life. I feel for kids. Some of you have children and grandchildren Alex and I I guess don't but I feel for them but you know um, I'm happy that I'm on, on the downward slope I guess you're happier on the downward slope no I'm not happier but oh. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm just saying that I, I feel better that I'm in the last third of my life you know and don't have to put up with all the bullshit with that Trump's going to screw up Although I do want to live long enough to see him go to prison. Well, you know what happened? I got to tell you, I I, I have the, I always had this feeling that as you got older, you got more respect. You know, mm-hmm. you know, you got more respect, and it's not true. You're you not get, Asian. You get less respect. I mean, every you're time, not Asian. I'm not Asian. It's not good. Oh, Asian oh, Asian oh, culture really cherish their elders, absolutely. and then when they pass away. They have a little temple thing in their house. I mean, they really respect their elders. Well, they wow. the, and they respect the opinion of their elders. Their elders are there to give them wise advice. You know, I mean, yeah. even in Indian tribes, they used to have a, 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 a some individuals they referred to as the wisest elders. Uh-huh. And whenever they would want to know, and sometimes an ex-chief or whatever was one of the wisest elders. Whenever they wanted an answer to the problems of the day. They would go to the wisest elders and they would get their opinion. Today, it's nobody wants to listen to old people. You know, just uh, shut. No, they want to. I don't know. My <laughs> nieces and nephews have never really talked to me much, but now they're all of a sudden starting to say hi, calling, you know, happy birthday stuff like that. And I said, "What's that about?" I was asking my mother. She says, "You're getting older." They see dollar signs coming their way. I said, 
<laughs> they're going to have bad news because they're not in my will. Mm. Mm. You know, I'm just, uh, you know, I, you know us on, on your list. I'm sorry. Oh, are we on your list? Yeah, we you are. are. I, I, I figured out how to spell Jeffrey Stein That's right, the other day, you. and so you definitely are. But. He's in the will? He's in the will? Of course. Why not? Well, uh, I don't know. The la uh, stick together. I, I'd like to say that probably chances are you're going to outlive Jeff. Okay. So okay. it's nice of you to say that he's getting money from the will, but that's what I told Shecky. Shecky said, I left you this much money in my will. And I said, well, that's very nice and it's wonderful. But, you know, at my age, you're going to way outlive me. I'm never, I, and I hope I never lived to see that money. And he was dead two months later. Wow, that yeah. really sad. You know, the sad news was that, you know, I lost my best friend. You know. That was a good uh, video that you posted of the, of the uh, memorial. What I did, I, I that was I, I think your little short minute, minute and a half oh. thing uh, was a good little speech. It was three <clears throat> minutes, three minutes. I timed it to the second. Whatever it was. Yeah. It, it was. It was. It was good. Oh yeah, no, I I was very happy with it. But you know, I mean, it it just amazed me that I said this to this guy. I said. Yeah, it's very nice of you, but come on, you know. I'm never well, gonna I, live to I see mean, I hope I never live to see that money as I think how I put it. And two I, months I have later. My roommate he was dead. my trust. He's six years older than me and in much worse health. But he's in he's in my well and you know, you never know who's gonna go first and I drive a lot more freeway driving. I could be in an auto accident and killed long before Listen, him. don't do it, otherwise I'd have three people here. Okay. Okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, I thought about donating money to GabNet, but then, I, you know, I don't know what they would do with the money. It, 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 <laughs> There's nothing there. It doesn't cost me that much to do. It costs me maybe, what, 500 a year to do this total, mm -hmm. I would say. You know, so. The one, one thing I'm glad about is, I mean, my mom, my family took a lot of pictures. So my mom took a lot of pictures when I was growing up, so I have a lot of, mem you know, I have a lot of pictures from that. And then I was always into pictures, so I have tons of pictures. And like every day, I take a picture of Adrian doing something funny or or, or something. So, so I mean, at least you know that there's there's a lot of stuff for her to remember me by from all the videos and everything that we do. So that that's a cool thing about the technology now is that there's so many memories. You see stuff on football players and stuff, and you know like like Stephen Curry. They show him when he's, you know, two, like three or four years old dribbling a basketball in clear video because, you know, when he was a kid, they were have video going on everywhere. So, yeah, pretty cool. uh, some of my pictures from when I was a kid, like at Universal Studios, are Polaroid black and white. Uh. No, that's the technology is what you're saying. I mean, you know, we can we can now take, you know, a, a hundred pictures that you could take a hundred pictures of Adrian running around the house. And then delete ninety-eight of them till you yeah. get the right one, and it doesn't cost you a dime. But let me let me tell you this. For instance, if I look and find uh, some pictures of me when I was a baby, okay, there are maybe maybe I don't know five pictures, six pictures of me as a baby. Mm -hmm. How many pictures of Adrian do you have as a baby? I have the first. Two minutes of her life, from there, every single day I have pictures of her. Yeah, and the di reason is, in the old days, when you took a photograph, that was a big deal. Right. When I was born, you took a photograph, you had to yeah, send it out to have it, it developed. Film. Yeah, yeah. if you even owned a camera, okay, yeah. then you yeah. took it out to be developed, you know. Yes, uh, Charlie. I have about 8 million pictures of my oldest daughter. I have about 5,000 pictures of my son. I have about two pictures of my youngest daughter. <laughs> because that was at a time when you took a picture and you had to take it to the one hour photo or wherever and get it well, developed. It wasn't that. It's just, I was too busy with the other two kids when the third one came along. We Hell, didn't have time to take pictures. We have this friend who drops their cat off once in a blue moon. They're going to dro drop the cat off again for the first time in a couple of years and in a few weeks from now. Mm -hmm. uh, but the cat, 
We took nothing but pictures of this cat like crazy. I've got more pictures of that cat than I can find of me as a baby. Okay? Wow. Because with an iPhone, you can take a picture every second, you know. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how many people do it, but I bet there are people who actually <clears throat> filled up their phones with pictures to where they can't well, leave, have any more because <laughs> they won't fit on your their, right. their when, account. When we were kids, they took a picture, then they had to take and have it developed. And then you look at it and you go, this one's blurry, that one's blurry, and throw half of them away. And, you know, I got a couple baby pictures of me, but not much. I mean, uh, maybe uh, from under 10 years old, I probably got 50 pictures of me. Yeah. Nowadays, yeah, yeah you got your iPhone or your smartphone or your right. whatever, and you're constantly producing pictures. And of the ones that come out blurry or the wrong light, you can correct the light on it and all that kind of stuff on the phone. And the other ones you just delete. When somebody walks in front of you, you say, oh, I'm sorry. I said, oh, don't worry. I'll take it again. That's right. I'll uh, take another Charlie, one. Charlie, Charlie, Alex has a riveting question for you that he's been wanting to ask you for years. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. really. What was I'm that? Here. What What was the question? What, I, what, what, a, what fills uh, the space in your shoe? Oh, yeah, do you oh, have yeah, to have a block or something? Alex. No, I used to put a wadded up sock in there to keep my foot from sliding around, but I found out later that it didn't really need it, so I, it's just empty space. Really? So you just have that empty space there? Yeah. It's just, yeah, well, show oh, it. No. <laughs> okay, oh, I got it. I, just, but... I wasn't going to show you. It's not pretty. I was saying, hey, I, 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 I have enough <laughs> trouble getting people to call this show now and to watch it. And I, I if, ever, if we hey, send so Charlie, them... Charlie, do you, do you ever, you know, get bored and you need a good laugh and you go to the shoe department and, you know, try on a shoe and ask if that one fits you and the guy goes to squeeze for your toe at the end <laughs> yeah. of the time there? <laughs> I'm too cheap to do, go to a store like that. I go to Walmart or Target and, and get shoes. If I visit you, we're going to the store to do that. <laughs> I bet you I'm, I'm going to mention something that maybe none of you ever had when you were a kid. Uh, and maybe I, Jeff, oh. but I don't know anybody else here. Oh, we used to go to the shoe department in a, you know, in a store like the Emporium, for instance. And uh, I would want to, we're going to get me some shoes, okay? So we would put the shoes on, and they would stick my foot. I would stand up and stick my foot under a fluoroscope. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you remember yeah. this, Charlie? Yes. yes. Yeah, we used to do that when I was a kid. Yeah. And yeah. you, you used to... So you could see the bones moving and stuff. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah, I, I remember that, too. I'm wondering how much radiation we got off of that. Oh, I, I bet we probably. <laughs> but the, yeah, the sad, the sad thing is, is the salesmen, those things weren't very well protected. So they're yeah. leaving over. A lot of them died of, of uh, radiation poisoning. Yeah, sure, they got camps. a lot more radiation. Was there, a, was there, in a fluoroscope, was there enough radiation to be that dangerous? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Really? Absolutely. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. Because now they call that thing a CT scan. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know. No, it actually. I think it actually put out more radio. They were. They were not. They, well, uh, they didn't know what they. They didn't know what they were doing. Hell, no, they didn't. When, when Oppenheimer made the bomb, he didn't know when he blew that thing up that the atmosphere wouldn't catch on fire. Well, it, that's yeah, how. That was a serious worry. Yeah. Yeah, that that box was wood with with steel lining, not even lead. And it had all kinds. I remember the the shoe store in Fremont having that. And so you stick your foot under it, and it... we just got so we just got so tickled about it, just to watch our bones moving around. But the salesmen that really? were there over the machine constantly got a yeah. lot of rads of radiation. I'm yeah. sorry, Jeff. You put your hand up. Jeff, yes. Well, Although, you turn on your mic, Jeff. You're muted. Turn on your mic. Yeah. Just just think about the first. Uh, atomic bomb that they were making that small one to do a test. The small, you mean the first all one? over the area. What? There was all people in the area oh, where oh, they oh, did the, the test. The radiation went as far as Canada. Yeah. Yeah. You know, after after the the war was over with, they would do testing in the Nevada desert. Yeah. And so they would invite people and have a party at these casinos. To watch the bomb go off, and a lot of those people the, had, the, the, had radiation poisoning from the fallout. The windows rattled mm -hmm. in yeah. Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
but, but it was a big, it was a big it. deal. It was a big deal. <clears throat> and and uh, but we didn't you know we didn't know what radiation would do to you then we had no, no. idea no. no you know um i think only one person died at, at uh where was it uh where did where, where, new mexico uh, where did, or whatever in yeah. new mexico uh i think only one person died in that whole thing but uh it was, it was, you know, we were playing with fire and we still are, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, what, what I think was insane was after the initial bomb, what they did is they kept testing them. Yeah. And they went out to the, you know, the Pacific, out to Bikini Atoll, and they yeah. kept blowing off one after another, after another, after another. I think, how many, how many, do you know how many they blew up in, in total? A lot. It, it was like probably hundreds. It, it, probably, and they just kept doing this. Part of the thing they didn't know about is the radiation poisoning, and they had ships with you know a thousand sailors on them, sitting mm -hmm. 10, 20, 30, 40 miles, <clears throat> 50 miles away from these explosions. And they and you know the when the when it filled the cloud and came back down you, on the ship, you couldn't be far enough away from that stuff. You know that's right. That's and they right. weren't. They mm -hmm. weren't. And it was horrible. It was terrible, yep. you know. Yep. Uh, and uh, but that's the kind of when I there's this film called The Day After Trinity, which is one bomb test after another. They just all the footage became declassified, mm -hmm. and they started running all the footage, one right after the other. And then the yep. ki the kilowatt. You've seen it, right, uh, Kevin? Uh, yeah, with the, with the uh, tonnage. Uh, on each one, and they got bigger and bigger and bigger. And there was one in mm -hmm. China where they actually took soldiers on horses riding into the radiation. And I don't know what they felt they were expected they were going to find out doing any of this. <laughs> the but interesting <laughs> thing is the bombs that they dropped in Japan and the one they tested in Trinity had like an ounce or two of radioactive material it's all the other equipment around it the fire the the gun type thing or whatever to get that to, yeah. to cause it to, to to go off and and uh do its thing i can't think of the yeah term well, right i mean now. those bombs were baby bombs by comparison yeah. to what we developed absolutely. now absolutely. Uh, but today charlie the bombs today <laughs> that they call a nuclear device russia says they have and you know, all these countries really supposedly have, Pakistan has one. Yeah. They're not of the same lethal, they aren't as strong as the as the originals, are they? I mean, they could be, but they 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 yeah. now have low, what they call low yield bombs, where they can, you know, instead of megatons, they're in the thousands of tons or whatever. Yeah, we found out we didn't need yeah. a hundred megaton bomb or something. Which we could, well, how much could that wipe out for crying out loud? That would have taken out most of Japan. Yep. Yeah. Oh, well, we're going to go see that movie finally on Tuesday. Mm. Good. Anybody seen Oppenheimer here? Not yet. Not yet. You want to see it, don't you, Charlie? Yep. Yeah. 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 Mm. Charlie and I have similar interests. Mm. We're we not going to do we, Barbenheimer? What? You're not gonna do Barbieheimer? No. no. I'm, I'm gonna see Barbie too. It's been sold out every theater within ten miles of my apartment. Well, you know something? I Marjorie goes, I don't want to see it. I'll see it when it's on TV. I don't want to go see it. And I'm going. Every review on this film has been spectacular. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, it's basically and the reviews say this isn't the film you came to see. You know. And, and uh, also what's wonderful about it is it's the fil first film ever to make a billion dollars at the box office directed by a woman. Yep. Is this Barbie or Oppenheimer? Barbie. 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 My wife and daughter went and saw it and they said it was really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They said I should have gone. I said, well, yeah. Yeah, I think Barbie it's, this time around was made for adults, not for kids, the movie. Yeah. Well, it was I, both. I, I, yeah. think, I think, you know, it's kind of like uh, everybody used to say to me, uh, gee, you know, those Warner Brothers cartoons, boy, 
some of them i don't know if i could uh, let my kid watch some of those and i go they said why do they make these for kids and i have to tell people they didn't make them for it's kids that's right there were actually two levels you could there was an innocent level mm -hmm. that you could laugh at but yes then it was but the cartoons the cartoons were made to go on in between two features yep. you know a feature and a secondary feature that were adult pictures you know yep. Pictures with Jimmy Cagney and uh, yeah. Edward G. Robinson yeah. and uh, whatever. And these were made basically for an adult audience, not for kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when you wonder about, you know, all the racism and everything else that's inherent in those old cartoons, you go, nah, pretty innocent for its time. Yes, uh, Ed, Jeff? Well, I went out to, to dinner with my wife and her friend, who's a professor, and she says, I got to go see this movie because all of my students are going to say everything about it, and I've got to really know what's going on. So I go, okay, you guys can go over to the movie. And I realize I'm in the car, and I'm going with them. <laughs> so I saw the thing. And uh. I'm going to tell you, for me, it got a little boring. It was overdone. From my perspective, it was focused for women. That's okay. What, Barbie? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it supposedly has a women's message and a women's Oh, yeah. That yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot, the whole movie uh, theater was filled with me and 50,000 women. It's like going to see Taylor Swift, yeah. <laughs> I went and did um, did the reviews today <clears throat> with uh, Snyder, which you can find posted here on uh, GabNet. Uh, and um, the one film I was interested in is this thing called The Last Voyage of the Demeter. I think it's called. I think that's the title of it. <laughs> and do you, you remember in the original Dracula movie, there's a portion of the film that takes place on a ship in which um, Dracula kills the entire crew before it gets to shore. Do you remember that part of the film? No. It's also no. in the book as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, very, it's about, a, about a, I'd say, a five-minute portion of the, of, of the movie Dracula. And they made a whole movie about that portion in which wow. all these people are stuck on this ship, which is slowly being, the people are being eradicated by this vampire mm -hmm. uh, who at night comes out and kills some people. And I, I thought it, it sounded like a great idea. Um, Snyder didn't like it as much. He didn't hate it, but he didn't like it that much. So, but then again, Snyder's always wrong. So, <laughs> you know. Oh, whatever. Hey, by the way, if you have never had a chance to hear his movie reviews, uh, they're up, you know, and we do them every couple of weeks. So You guys um, did that every Friday, huh? Live 105? On no, um, Fridays at Live 105, yeah. Yeah, you guys always argued. Yeah, yeah, and it hasn't changed. <laughs> you know. Well, you see, what I, I, always I, hate, what I always hated was he would take a movie uh, that he hated and spend 10 minutes on it and yeah. then a movie that was good he spent five minutes on yeah and i went you know it doesn't make sense to me why don't you just not review the ones that are bad and only review the ones that are good you know speaking yeah. of which did you sorry no go ahead okay. go ahead no i was kind of off subject go ahead no go ahead no i was uh, did you hear that scoop nisker died i heard yeah yeah. yeah. I, I never, didn't know if you knew him. Or I not. never knew him. I oh, never okay. knew him. It yeah. was real I really liked his news his his newscast. Yeah. Um back in the case and days. I'm trying to prevent myself from sneezing. I'm not doing my Hitler uh -huh. impression. Uh -huh. How do I do my Hitler impression? Like this, I guess. <laughs> uh anyway, so I uh, the other thing that was bothering me today, God, it drives me crazy. To begin with, the two things that drive me crazy now when I watch, Marjorie watches MSNBC and she watches every newscast. And uh, 
One thing that drives me nuts are the ads they run. Now, here's what drives me nuts. I was in kind of advertising for a short time. And the one thing I learned about is if you're going to do a commercial, you do about five versions of them. And then you run them. When you run them a lot, you just rotate them. And therefore, nobody gets tired of the same commercial over and over again. They don't do that anymore. They've got this, what is the one with Liberty Mutual with Limu the Emu? Yeah. They have an ad with the little kid, with a little kid in the <laughs> car with his own little emu and so on. Okay, cute the first time. All right, I'll they buy it. They do have two versions of that. They have a short version. Well, they have a longer. short version, but yeah. it's the same yeah. version. They just goddamn cut thing. it yeah. short. They have a 15 second and a 30 second version. Yep, they run it the over and over and over. It's like over. the same one with the uh, city commercial and the mm. chick in the vibrating chair. Oh, the chick in the vibrating chair. What? <laughs> yeah, the one that goes to Lowe's and buys a chair for $5,000 on her, uh, on her uh, city card. No. Oh, I'm you've got to have seen that. I see it every morning at 718 and <laughs> 749 on, N on NBC. Just Who's because I'm drinking hour? my coffee. Mm. Yeah. Jesus. Well, all I know is they keep running these same commercial. A lot of these advertisers run the same commercial over Every and over morning. and over again. And they're at the same time. I mean, this one I happen to know because I'm up at that time, you know, getting my coffee. And if you're, and it's, if you're, uh, the if, Today Show is on or whatever, and, and it's the same time, the same commercial. Every freaking time, and, and if says, you're very, I want and, this, and, and you got a cucumber water, and da da da, and she's in Lowe's, and she rolls back, and she gets her massage. That I, that like, one I haven't seen. Oh, you have to. But that must I, be the treat for the early morning mm, audiences. Yeah, not up that early. West Coast. <laughs> but then, it just drives me nuts. Some of these commercials over, and sometimes if you're really lucky, they do it twice in the same break. In the same yeah. ad, same oh, that, yeah, the, the back to back the ones, yeah, that's when I think they're using that. Uh, and and here's the other thing I don't get about ads these days: uh, they run commercial. Let's say they run a commercial for an insurance company, and the commercial right after it is for another insurance company. Yeah. <laughs> now, when I was working the business, you guaranteed separation from competing advertisers that. by. You know, maybe 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But no more. Screw you. We're going to run. The, here comes Limu the Emu, followed by uh, uh, oh, Flo and her friends back. over there, Progressive, you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, they're mm -hmm. running. Yeah, the one they're running is the Barbie ad with, progr with Progressive. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. That one they run over and yeah. over. Yeah. I, yeah. She has a boyfriend, but I can't. I, mm -hmm. I tell you, but I don't think that I can. Yeah. yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And I mean, over and over and over and over. And you just, it's like, you know, after a while, you want to just kill yourself. Yeah. And that's why we're talking about it, huh? Yeah. Well, let me talk about one it's other working. thing here that really bothered me tonight watching the news. NBC, the one... NBC at the beginning of the news took 12 minutes. On what story do you think? Hunter Biden. No. No. Well, well, that that took fire? a minute. That took a minute. Was what? that the fire? The fire in Hawaii. Uh, yeah. Oh. Now, now look, it's it's a big story and it's a sad story and it's uh, mm -hmm. it it only points up of course climate uh, you know climate problems and so on. Speaking um, of which. But you what? I said speaking of which I sent Renee a an email to see if she was okay. Yeah, but have you ever heard back from her on any emails? No, I have not. See? No. Uh, but anyway, uh, global warming is a fact of life. And, and I th you know, but 12 minutes, and what was this 12 minute? what most of this 12 minutes concerned with? Showing endless numbers of people. God, I can't talk anymore. En endless numbers of people um, crying. Yeah. Crying. Well, that's what they do. Is they? I think the big yeah. thing with the media now is to do an interview and see if you can make somebody cry. 
Yeah. Well, they they get you close, and yeah. then, then they ask another question and poke. And, and sometimes it's a very stupid question. I heard yeah, one. Yeah, but might, they uh, poke. They're trying to get the soft spot. You yeah. know, so I think one of the one of the reporters said something like, "Are you sad? At what happened? You know? Yeah. Or whatever. Did you? Yeah, are you sad that your dog is laying in there, charred like a piece of charcoal? Yeah. Yeah. A police car- yeah. cry for. Anyway, it Tell was twelve if- minutes of one person after another crying. And I'm going, how can you exploit human pain yeah, just this stop. vicariously, you know? Why don't they find the person that's house was not burned down and interview them? You know, what's amazing. If you look at the land, of it all, the landscape, you see pretty much charred houses. But every now and then you see a house here that's perfect, yeah. another house that's perfect, and a building that, you know, is in you can move right back into it tomorrow. And I don't know what makes the difference. There must be something about shrubbery or whatever around it's your Where house. the wind blew. Do you think that's it? Yeah. yeah Jump them. Probably. Just what? where the they, wind uh, blew. San Francisco Mayor London Breed was in Maui. They had to get her out. Really? Wow. Why? Why did they have to get her out? <laughs> she was vacationing there. She was vacationing there. No, they, oh, yeah. she wanted, like, they wanted to bring her back to San Francisco and show her what devastation really looks like. Yeah, yeah. She went back <laughs> to work. What's changed? Yeah. Yeah. Cry. yeah. Wow. Yeah. The friend, our friend uh, um, Howard. I remember Howard from Hawaii. He used yeah. to call. Him. Yeah. Yeah. I text him back and forth a little bit. He's he's on the other part of Maui, a little bit more south. And yeah, he just said that there is no power over there and. Yeah, he just said, yeah, it, it sounds real bad. So. I think we're seeing only one part of Maui, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right down down the north. I seem to remember uh, Maui being a much bigger island than just that. You know? Yeah, sort of two, like, that are together a little bit. So, yeah, there's, yeah, it's sort well, of Lahaina's a big one, but it's like two. Just that one little area. It's like a downtown kind of area. Yeah. I, I've been there. I've, I've been to half of those buildings there. Yeah. Yep. And the, uh, the banyan tree. And I've all never that. been to Maui. I've been to Oahu, of course. And I, then I've also been to Kauai. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> that, that was. That area right there was really cool, but sucks that shit yeah. happened there. I remember when Kauai got completely decimated by a uh, tropical storm. I yeah. think they're spending more time on Maui fires than they do in California fires. Well, it's it's a strange yeah. kind of situation. I mean, if you're near the water, just drop, jump in the water. You know, yeah, unless you can't swim, yeah. there are bodies floating up to the shore. Really? Yeah. yeah. It was on the news last night. I saw CNN. that. They well, like bodies. The, 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 the governor of Hawaii was flying over in a helicopter. Uh, it's up to sixty-nine, I think now. Sixty-nine. Well, I've been out on fire for four hours. Oh, I bet it's going to end up being thousands by the time this is over. Uh, they they say they could at least be a thousand. You know? Really? Wow. There are a lot of people that are unaccounted for. Yeah, they're missing. Well, it wasn't it wasn't this also this fire exacerbated by a uh, uh, hurricane? Uh, there was a hurricane off the shore a while a ways off the shore. Like four hundred uh, miles off the shore. Yeah, yeah. but. The the wind conditions and the, the the high pressure and low pressures on the outside of the hurricanes were contributing to it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I heard. <clears throat> we must listen to the. But I mean, it's terrible. Coming. But I I just hate the fact that they exploit tragedy like this. You know, I and I know when I was in the marina and we had the earthquake back in what was it eighty nine, eighty nine, eighty nine. And we all had to get out of our homes in the marina. We couldn't come back for several days. But the the people were there, the news people were there, and they were just exploiting the situation. You know, we feel bad enough without you coming up and asking us. Did you ever get interviewed? Oh, what happened was I was helping a friend of mine out of her place because she was redlined. That meant she had to get out and don't come back. Red, you know. red tag, yeah. Yeah, red, red line, red tag, whatever. Anyway, yeah, uh, and uh, I was helping her. I had we had a little REO speed wagon, you know, that we were dragging along with just measly, measly possessions. And all of a sudden, a reporter comes up, very quietly, respectfully, says, uh, 
pretty rough out here? And we went, yeah. He said, uh, well, what's, uh, you know, how do you feel? And she started talking, and as she started talking, it was like popcorns on pigeons. Or pigeons on popcorn, excuse me. <laughs> See, I'm, it, I just can't communicate anymore. Pid, uh, am I that bad? No. Oh, okay. No. Uh, pigeons on popcorn. Just literally, I gotta say, maybe 50, 100 cameras now pointing oh. at us all at once. I mean, it was just bizarre. Well, they recognized you as being the great Alex Bennett. Yeah, right, right. It was, it was bizarre. And then wow. they ask a stupid question. Like, she said, well, you know, um, they were hauling a, uh, um, a body out of that building over there just a couple of hours ago. And one of the reporters says, what did it look like? <laughs> and she yelled back at them. He was dead. dead. Okay. Dead. Any other questions? You know, I mean, it just, it, I felt put upon. I really felt that in a time when we needed a little peace and quiet to have these guys coming in and exploiting it just absolutely, you know, drove me nuts. How, were you, you were around that time, right, Kevin? You know, oh, yeah. you know, oh, where yeah. we were going I, re to. I remember it. I was in Fremont when it happened. Yeah. I drove over both bridges yeah. and over the, over the Cypress. Oh yeah. Way. I used to drive the Cypress structure twice a week. The only, the only thing that I, that was good though, one, uh, the, what was it? The day after the earthquake, uh, I'm walking back into the Marina to go to my place. And as I'm walking in, walking out is Tom Brokaw. Hmm. Oh, wow. And he, he was doing a stand-up, I guess, down the street or whatever. And he just looked at me and he went, how's it going? You know, yeah. what, my bad you impression of Tom Brokaw. Yeah. And I said, it's, it's not, not easy. He said, well, I, you know, good luck to you. And he was just very respectful, very nice. respectful. Nice. Um, but that, you know, it, that was quite, a, quite an incident. And it played up to me the fact that the news gets in the way, okay? You know, yep. we've got to get our lives together, and you're getting in the way here. Yep. And uh, I can't imagine what the people in, in uh, Maui are putting up with now, with the press. Cause well, you know, in California, there are places you can just drive out of San Francisco or out of the fire zone if you can get out of it. And there are places you can just drive to Maui. You got your your water logged. I mean, oh, you're on an island. You're on you're, right. There's nowhere to go. I mean, you know. Yeah. Now the fire didn't decimate the entire island, right? No, not yet, at least. Uh, is the fire still going on? Still going. It's at terrible. At least it was earlier today. Just all I gotta say yeah. is leave those people alone. Please. Oh, yeah, I think I think it was like Southwest or somebody was offering nineteen dollar uh, flights out to get people out of there. Yeah, United like United canceled flights going into Hawaii, so they had aircraft that mm. were that were at the airport there and allowing people to get on the flights cheaply, at like like Southwest and a couple of. Them. Well, right. there's my theme That's song. Cool. By the way, we're playing it. Oh my God, that went so quick. Yeah. It was a nice. Uh, no, nice... We didn't even get to see Charlie's toes. No, oh, Charlie, don't please don't post those again. You, I have that in my <laughs> I head. I said you can oh. just go look and see. <laughs> They're out there. Anyway, thank you so much, Brian. Always good to have you here. Where's Adrian tonight? She's playing games because it's Friday night. Oh, I see. Okay, uh, Jeff. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. As well as. Uh, you, uh, uh, Alan, we always like having you here. Charlie, yep. great to have you here. And of course, Kevin is always a joy to behold. Oh, Santa on our show every night. It's just wonderful. <laughs> anyway, everybody give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they no, go, folks. It's, some of them are hanging up already, so let me just uh, wave <laughs> goodbye, okay. That's our citizen panel for tonight, folks. They'll be back again on, uh, well, on Monday we're going to do our uh, our little uh, uh, pop-up show, which goes on out over um, Facebook. And then we'll be back here again 
uh, next week at uh, m- Wednesday at 10.30 Eastern Time. Same time. Uh, same station in life. Jack's next. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Have a nice weekend, everybody. Take it easy, okay? Okay.